Welcome back, book buddies. Let's open day five. Aurora and the Diamond Crown. Day five. Aurora and the Diamond Crown. Aurora awoke one sunny morning in the most cheerful of moods. After all, it was her 17th birthday and she could not wait to see what wonderful surprises were in store. Luckily, she did not have to wait too long. As soon as she had got dressed, her mother, the Queen, came in. Happy birthday, darling, said the Queen. Aurora was quick to notice that her mother was wearing a crown Aurora had never seen before. Glimmering at the centre was a large pink heart-shaped diamond, trimmed of of all round with smaller sparkling diamonds. Mother, she cried, what a beautiful crown. Is it new? Actually, replied the queen, it's quite old. And it's the reason I've come to you so early on this very special day. With that, the queen took Aurora by the hand and led her through the castle to a, to a great portrait on the wall. It was filled with stately paintings each of the lovely young princesses wearing a crown, just like the queen was wearing. Why, mother, explained Aurora, pointing at the nearest portrait. Is that you? Indeed it is, replied the queen. It was painted on my 17th birthday. You see, Aurora, it's a tradition in our kingdom that on a princess's 17th birthday, this crown will pass down to her by her mother. It will be worn until the day the princess herself becomes queen. Oh, mother, Aurora gasped. Is that crown truly to be mine? Well, her mother said with a smile, I certainly hope so. But according to tradition, you must first earn it. How? asked Aurora. By answering three riddles, her mother explained. Just then, three fairies, Flora, Fauna and Merriweather, flew in. Happy birthday, princess, said Merriweather. We're, we've, we're here to give you your clothes. Then the queen kissed Aurora. Think hard, my dear, and good luck. With a wave of their magic wands, the fairies made themselves bigger and transported themselves to Aurora out onto the castle grounds. Then Flora stepped up and recited the first riddle. To the eyes, it's a threat. To the nose, a delight. But we wear. To the hand, it can be quite a fright. Though few think to taste it, it's the sweetest still shows. To this first riddle, the answer is a... Hmm, said Aurora when Flora was done. Oh, I know, said Merriweather. Of course you know, scolded, scolded Fauna. It's Aurora who has to guess. Do you know what the answer is, dearie? asked Flora. Let's see, said Aurora. To the eye... It's a treat, so it's pretty, to the nose as a light, so it smells good, to the hand quite a fright, so it must hurt, like a thorn, on a rose, isn't it? Isn't it? She hurried off to the rose garden, where she picked the biggest, most fragrant rose she could find. Very good, exclaimed Fauna, and now for the second one. Some paint it, some steal it, some blow it away. Some do it several times in a day. Some who are shy might blush getting this. On their hand or on their cheek, can you guess? It's a... Uh... Well, said Aurora, thinking, if someone can plant it, it might be perhaps a flower or a dandelion, perhaps. You can blow them away too, of course. We don't have any of those in the garden. But what can you get on your hand or on your cheek? She wondered aloud as she gazed at her reflection in the garden pool. I know, Aurora cried suddenly. It's a kiss, isn't it? Of course it is. 
and as if to prove it, she planted a kiss on each of the fairies, causing them to blush. Honestly, said Flora, you're figuring out the answers faster than any princesses yet. Now it's my turn, explained Meriwether. Are you ready, Aurora? I think so, she replied. Ahem. Meriwether cleared her throat. What only gets stronger the longer it lives? What pays you back tenfold the more that you give? Some say it's blind. Some say it's true. Some just say simply, I feel this for you. Meriwether giggled. Silly me, I almost said the answer. Let's, well, let's see, said Aurora. It might be a tree that gets stronger and longer it lives. And I suppose you could say that a tree is blind, but so are bats. Aurora thought and thought. She was still thinking when Prince Philip walked by, leading his horse, Samson. Happy birthday, my love, he said with a big smile. And instantly, Aurora knew what the answer to a riddle was. Happily, Aurora hurried back to the castle and up to the mother's sewing room. I've solved the three riddles, she announced. She took the pink rose from her hair and handed it to her mother. Then Aurora gave her a kiss on the cheek. Very good, declared the queen. And the answer to the third riddle? That's when the fairies brought in Prince Philip. It's love, said Aurora. Of course. No sooner had Aurora said the words than the queen took the crown from her head and proudly placed it on Aurora's. And then, some say, the heart-shaped diamond shone even brighter than before. That very afternoon, Aurora had her portrait painted, just as all the clever princesses had come had come before her had. And that night, there was a grand birthday ball held in the castle in Aurora's, in Aurora's honour. Happy birthday, Aurora, my darling, her mother warmly told her. And may you have many, many more. The end. Thank you very much for joining me again today. Do come back so we can read more books together. Please like and subscribe. Bye.